2017 Gujarat Assembly polls saw the rise of three young stalwarts who positioned themselves as harbingers of change for their respective communities. Hardik Patel, the tough-talking Patidar leader, Alpesh Thakur, young OBC leader who rallied the other backward classes, and lawyer and activist Jignesh Mevani, the voice that raised the Dalit oppression issues relentlessly. Cut to 2022. A lot has changed. Two out of these three mass youth motivators, Hardik and Alpesh, have switched sides to work with the party they were earlier working against, the BJP. Mewani, who fought the election as an independent, is now contesting on the Congress ticket. Each of them keen to mainstream their struggle for their caste and community. If we compare the three, maybe it was Hardik Patel who garnered most public and media interest. His meeting with Rahul Gandhi provided fodder for days to news channels as leaked CCTV footage added fuel to frenzied coverage. Then Congress President Rahul Gandhi's keen interest in rebuilding Congress in Gujarat, along with the push from these three young anti-BJP leaders, gave strength to the idea of resurgence of Congress. Hardik, who was yet to turn 25 in 2017, had roused the Partidar youth to take to the streets demanding reservation and was a key weapon used by Congress to target PM Modi and Amit Shah apart from the state leadership. He was instrumental in helping Congress dismantle the development narrative of BJP and helped Congress in achieving one of its best performances in decades. But now, after his disenchantment with the Congress and his newfound love of the BJP, it's not going to be easy for Hardik. His jibes won't have the same sharpness and his salvos might lack the firepower of his earlier avatar. Hardik and BJP's alliance is a very uneasy one, since both have crossed the lines of propriety while attacking each other in the past. BJP walas will not forget Hardik's chokidar jibes easily, nor will Hardik forget the alleged sex CD scandal. For now, it suits both of them to be in this uneasy relationship. It was way back in 2017 only that uh, distance cropped up between Hardik Patel and his other mates from the Partidar Anamat Andolan Samiti or the PAS that he founded for the Partidar agitation. Now, all of them are scattered around in the three main parties. While PAS may not have any substance anymore, but the youth that had felt emotionally and politically connected to it might now be feeling let down by their leader, including Hardik Patel. According to reports, around 14 lives were lost during the agitation and many might see this political jugglery of Hardik as a betrayal to their memory. Hardik also seems to be largely mum over the Partidar reservation issue and has now refashioned himself into a small soldier of PM Modi. The reservation issue has more or less been abandoned by him, as is clear from his recent statement on the economically weaker section or the EWS quota. Hardik said that the centre's decision of 10% EWS reservation without disturbing the existing quota resolved many issues of the Patels in Gujarat and the community will ensure the BJP's massive victory in the upcoming assembly polls. Now, Hardik is focused on winning the election from Viram Gaon Assembly constituency on the lotus symbol. While BJP has managed to more or less decimate the resurging Congress attack of 2017, the weak links of BJP that were exposed then will get exploited by the new entrant, Aam Party. In 2017, Congress won 77 of the 177 seats it had fought on, polling 41.44% of the votes, while BJP won 99 of the 182 seats it took on, garnering 49.05% of the vote share. Now, the battle is triangular, with AAP vying for both the vote share pies. In such a scenario, it will be interesting to note how much of an effect do these wild cards of 2017 have in 2022. Do tell us what you think about this video in the comment section and also for the latest news updates, subscribe to India Today.